Hey everyone, so a friend posted in our real um, Facebook group a, a headline um, with the question, I've often wondered why editors scare manga, any ideas? And I thought it was really timely for us to have a look at this very scary world of newspaper headlines right now and how it fits with the conversation about reality and how we navigate that world without either getting lost in the manipulation of it or making our lives so small and so closed off with lots of spiritual justification you know it's not real nothing's true it's just a dream and so we get smaller and smaller more and more barricaded into this ivory tower of no reality um, and, and our intimacy with the world is lost. So, so where do we go? So let's look, first of all look at why do editors scare manga? Because it sells papers, doesn't it? Um, fear, um, fear, sex, horror, <laughs> um, with the my the human mind is 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 tuned in to be alert to those things to want to find out more isn't it because in a way that's that looks like how we'll protect ourselves is by finding out more more and more and more of these scary scary horror stories so it's quite i mean it it sells papers it it grabs attention it um gets all the clicks that the editor wants and um, job done. But in terms of us and how we relate to that, and it's interesting because someone replied to that post in the Facebook group saying, maybe let's start by having a look at how we do that, which is really cool, isn't it? Because that's now the start of, instead of seeing these newspaper headlines as something external to us and we're we're a bit superior to the editors who would try to sell paper through generating fear look at how we do that so we can we can look at it really in two ways of how how attention is drawn or how whatever it is we want to achieve is done through um, dramatic story. Very cool to see this, how, like how, how the, the phrases we use, the, the pauses, the tone of voice, the um, teasers, how all of that is, is an orchestration of attention. So we can really start to see all the the same techniques that an editor is using to sell the newspaper or to sell their website. We're using them ourselves, you know. And we yeah, so awesome to be really honest about that. And then we can go on another level within that to see how the mind does it within itself. <laughs> So like this, this sort of ongoing inner drama of life, which is our lived experience of being, how, how the narrative grabs all of the inner attention, all the inner resources. So the, the narrative of fear, of shame, of horror, of drama, of, of life and death, that inner believed reality, that sort of inner commentary on what is what what life is, how how does that inner commentary with its drama, with its tension, with its pressing of all the buttons, how does that grab all of the internal attention, the internal resources to become the only lived experience of being? so interesting that isn't it so it's two levels 
our own our own sort of outward behavior our own relationships to other people and then inner the inner lived experience and this isn't because there's a, a me in there that's controlling any of this. It's just because seeing it shifts to seeing it in action rather than the, the unconscious lived, livedness of it. There's just now so the, the unconscious believedness, the livedness is shifting to the witnessing of it. And in the witnessing of it, there's a... Um, there's a truer perspective. It's seeing it in action rather than swept up in the story of it. So it's just like watching a, a, a film on television, seeing instead of lost, completely immersed, completely lost in it, seeing, you know, in, in here comes the music, there's the camera angle, there's the glance at the scared face you know we start seeing the techniques of it um and 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 so there's the perspective becomes more sane more real yeah so that's so that's the sort of scaremongering angle of it then how so the, it gives rise to the question how do we know what's true and it's it's a tough question that really because the input that's coming in is never objective it's only ever a view and so and yet this whole system is operating on information and so the challenge becomes and i think it's an ongoing challenge of life which is happening in concert with the healing of the conditioning so the the healing of the fear, the shame, the insecurity, which is continually projected out and becomes the lived experience when it's not healed. So the system is becoming more and more sane and less and less reactive to its own belief system, its own external projections. And at the same time as that's happening, there's greater and greater presence isn't there because the projection hides the presence when we're living an unconscious life of projection we're not in reality we're not in truth we're we're basically living from when we were six five four years old um but now we're more in reality and I think here, and, and, and there's less and less need to identify with any particular stand, with any particular story. Um, so the story within us is being healed, which means that there's less and less story out there. There's just ongoing information coming in. And when there's resistance to that information, when it sends us into this sort of crisis of fear and panic, it's a sign. It's a sign. We actually, no, that's not information we're reacting to there. We're reacting to the overlay, the meaning, the sort of future scenario of, of that information, which and none of that is true. So it's like everything's cleaning up, cleaning, 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 becoming more and more sane, more and more real. And, and there's just more to work with then. There's more intimacy in the world. Awesome. What's not to love about that? Yeah. So thank you. Good question. It's it's a rich area. It's led to the whole look at what's actually true. Yeah. So thank you. Lots of love. Bye.